Hello everybody and welcome to my melee combat training guide for 2021. Now combat in old school runescape can seem very simplistic at first, however once you learn more about it you come to realize that there is a lot of depth to it. Now today's guide is primarily going to be a training guide, as I'm not going to be going over every single mechanic of melee combat, however I am going to touch on some of the more important ones. Primarily, I'm going to be focusing on gear that you're going to want to use and some of the better training locations. However, throughout the whole thing, I'm going to be giving you a lot of different routes and options available, so there should be something for everyone. As always, guys, if you do appreciate the work that goes into making these skill guides, always appreciate a like on the video. It helps a lot. Anyway, guys, let's get started. Now, at its most basic level, melee combat can be divided into three skills, attack, strength, and defense. Now, as these are all trained in a very similar manner, they're all going to be included in one guide. Ranged and magic are other combat skills, however, I have made a separate skill guide for those, which there will be a link in the description for that. Now, generally, each of these melee combat skills need to be leveled up separately, and they will all provide different attributes for your account. Increasing your attack level will increase your accuracy. Keep in mind this does not determine how much damage you can potentially do, just how often you are going to hit your opponent. Now strength in old school runescape is what's going to determine how high you can hit or a player's max hit. Now this is often the more preferred skill to level up first, as hitting higher damage numbers is very important and is often a more efficient way to level up your account. So just to differentiate these a bit, for example if you had an account that had 50 strength but 1 attack, you could potentially hit as high as a 6, however you would not hit that very often at all because you'd be very inaccurate. Conversely, if you had 50 attack and 1 strength, your max hit would be a 1, which you would hit fairly frequently, however you would never be able to hit more than a 1. So obviously in most cases you want to level these up in tandem. Now by increasing your defense stat, that is going to decrease the likelihood of being hit by an opponent, so you will avoid melee ranged and magic attacks more often. However, keep in mind magic does have a caveat to it, that your magical defense is only determined 30% by your actual defense level and 70% by your magic level, so it's a bit less effective there. Now to switch between your different combat training options, you want to come over here to the combat options tab. Now most weapons will have the ability to train all of the combat stats, attack, strength, and defense, however some won't have all of them. Now you'll normally have 3 or 4 attack options and if you hover over them it'll tell you which type of experience is going to get. Generally the top left option will give you attack experience, the bottom right option will generally give you defense experience, and the other two will generally give you either a strength or attack option. Now for melee training there are quite a few different monsters and routes you could potentially take to level up the skills, however regardless of what route you want to take, by far the most efficient way to level up your melee combats in the early levels is questing. There are quite a few integral quests to get done early, not only because they provide you with really good melee combat experience rewards, but also they are just very important quests to get done regardless for just general game progression. Now the quests I would highly recommend getting done early are Waterfall Quest. If you complete Waterfall Quest right from level 1, which is easily doable, that will immediately bump you up from level 1 to 30 attack and strength, which will 100% be much quicker than training it up manually. Other important quests to get done early are Trinum Village, which will give you another big experience reward and attack, as well as access to the Spirit Tree system, very useful. I would also recommend completing the Grand Tree to get more attack experience, the Fight Arena quest, which again is going to give you some attack experience, the Holy Grail quest, which will give you a bunch of prayer and defense experience, and finally Dragon Slayer 1 which once again will give you a bunch of strength and defense experience. Now if you do complete all of those quests starting from level 1, you're going to get 38 strength, 44 attack, and 39 defense without ever having trained any of the melee combats. And in general, it'll actually be quicker for you to complete all of those quests than for you to train from level 1 to 40 manually, while also unlocking a plethora of very important rewards. Now starting at around level 40 combat is realistically when you're going to need to start doing some actual melee training. Now the first route I want to show you is going to be the easiest, the most AFK, and one of the most popular ways to get 99 in all of your melee stats. Sure it's a little bit boring, but it is very effective and very cheap. 
So one of the most popular ways to train your melee combat starting at around level 40 is by training on a low defense monster like crabs. Fighting something like sand crabs, ammonite crabs, or even rock crabs are very popular because they are aggressive towards you, uh, which means you can AFK there for a long period of time, and they have a lot of hit points, which means they provide very competitive experience rates. Now I am presuming that you don't want to punch the crabs to death, so you're going to need to bring some gear. A really good and cost effective gear set to start off your melee combat training is to go to the Grand Exchange and buy a Rune Scimitar, an Amulet of Glory, a Combat Bracelet, Rune Boots, and a full Rune Set. In total this will only cost you like 150k or something like that and is a great base to get started with. Now if you go ahead and buy all those items and quest at the early levels, you will already be able to hit a max of 10, and you haven't even started training yet. Now from levels 40 to 70, we're going to be training ideally on Ammonite Crabs. Now those are located on Fossil Island and do require the completion of the Bone Voyage quest to unlock. However, if you don't feel like doing that, Sand Crabs are another really good option. They're located on Zaya, and you can go there right away. Now the crabs are going to be located in the ground, and once you get near them, they will become aggressive to you and attack you automatically. Now to begin with, you only really need to find two crabs that are close together, as your damage output isn't that much in the early levels. However, once you get into the 50s and 60s, you probably want to find a location with three crabs. That can be a little challenging because this is a very popular training location, but it is required to get the maximum experience rate. Now one of the biggest benefits of this training method is you can AFK here for usually 10 minutes at a time, which means going through the low levels will be incredibly low effort. Now after 10 minutes, the crabs will stop being aggressive towards you and stop attacking you automatically. Uh, to reset this, you just need to run a fair distance away, only 5 or 10 seconds in the direction, and run right back. Now it is definitely recommended to bring attack and strength potions with you. The crabs won't do any damage, so you can fill up your entire inventory with potions. If you just buy the super attack and strength potions off the Grand Exchange, they're not too expensive, and they will have a notable benefit on your experience rate. Now, if you do come here right at level 40, your starting experience rate will be around 25k to 30k per hour, uh, but that will go up fairly quickly as you go through quick early levels. Once you get up to level 60, you're going to start getting around 40 to 45k per hour, and at level 70, you're going to be closer to 50k per hour. So essentially, what that means is to get from level 40 to 70 in all of your melee combat stats, it's going to take you roughly 50 hours. Uh, so next up here we should have a look at what gear upgrades you should be looking to make during that level range. And one of the best ways to increase your damage beyond just training is upgrading your gear. However with that said, I would highly recommend not spending much money on gear in the early levels. As your return on investment gets very minimal as you get into the more expensive gears and usually you're going to be just better off training a few extra levels than buying an incredibly expensive piece of gear. Now luckily quite a bit of the best early and mid game gear is either free because it's from a quest reward or it's just incredibly cheap. Now between levels 40 and 70 there are quite a few pieces of gear I would highly recommend trying to get. First to appear at level 60 attack you can wear a dragon scimitar, however you do need to complete monkey madness 1 to be able to wield it. It is a giant dps increase though and I would highly recommend doing it. Now fun fact if you are extremely wealthy and you just for some reason don't feel like uh, doing Monkey Madness 1, if you buy a Figora's Chain Maze directly from the Grand Exchange, it is actually on par with the Dragon Scimitar, even in its uncharged state. That said, it does cost 8 mil right now, so maybe not recommended for those who don't have that much money. Another good upgrade you can get between levels 40 and 70 is the Fighter Torso. You get that from Barbarian Assault. It is a combat minigame, and while the Fighter Torso only has a requirement of 40, it does take a while to get, and a bit of knowledge on Barbarian Assault, but it is definitely more than worth it. Another really good upgrade in this level range is the Helm of Needs Knot. You get this from the Fremnic Isles quest, and requires 55 defense to wear, but it is one of the only early game helmets that provide a strength bonus, so it is a really good item to get. Another really key upgrade you should try to get is the Defender. Now to get the Defenders, you do need access to the Warrior's Guild, which requires roughly around 65 attack and strength. The actual requirement is 130 between the two. The Dragon Defenders are probably one of the highest priority things to get around that level. So as soon as you can get in there, I would go ahead and try to get them. Now finally here we have the Fire Cape. Now there are no strict requirements on when you can get the Fire Cape. It's really going to come down to your own personal skill. But for most players, they're roughly going to need around 70 combat, if not more but it's something to work towards. And the final item I'd recommend having on your radar within these level ranges are Barrow's Gloves. These are one of the best glove slot items in the entire game, but do require the completion of Recipe for Disaster. It is one of the longest quests in the entire game, 
but it is something you should definitely work towards doing eventually. Now starting at level 70 is when you really unlock one of the most powerful tools for leveling up your melee stats, and that would be the Nightmare Zone. Now you can go here before level 70, but it's generally not as efficient because you have lower defenses, and you haven't really unlocked tier 70 weapons yet. Now the Nightmare Zone can be a little confusing to begin with here, and there's quite a few different ways that you can approach this. Now the Nightmare Zone offers a ton of versatility, you can get pretty well the highest experience rate in the game, but it does require quite a bit of focus. You can get by far the most AFK training method in the game if you want, where you can AFK for up to 20 minutes, or there are of course options in between. Now today I'm just going to be showing you the AFK option, and there's a reason for that. Personally, I believe that if you are prepared to focus on the game and do an engaging click intensive combat training method, you may as well be doing Slayer, killing a monster for profit, or bossing, and we'll get into that in a minute. Personally, I think Nightmare Zone is a very powerful tool to get AFK experience, but that will vary from player to player. Now, Nightmare Zone is a minigame that is located a little bit north of Yanil. Now, as far as recommended gear for Nightmare Zone, there are two good cost-effective options that you can do at level 70. Now, for training attack or defense, you definitely want to pick yourself up the titan of cost-effectiveness, the Abyssal Whip. The Abyssal Whip is amazing, and it only costs around 2 mil right now. Now, to go with that, you probably also want to pick up a Amulet of Fury, the Obsidian Plate Legs, and the Berserker Ring, and that will give you probably the most cost-effective DPS increase that you can at that level. Now, one of the limitations of the Abyssal Whip is you cannot train strength with it, so when you want to train strength, I would highly recommend buying the full Obsidian Armor Set with the Obsidian Sword and the Berserker Necklace. Now, this armor set is really strong for its level and cost, and it will give you a giant boost to both your melee strength and accuracy if you have the full set and the Berserker Necklace. I would highly recommend buying this and it should take you all the way to 99 if you want and will only cost you around 4 or 5 mil. Now in my opinion the best method for AFK Nightmare Zone experience is the Absorption Pot method. Now the Absorption Pot method works because you fill your inventory with the Absorption Potions, you can drink a bunch of them at once, and they'll absorb any damage that you take. And this essentially allows you to AFK for a long period of time. Now to get absorption potions, you do need to actually participate in the nightmare zones. Uh, so to begin with here, I'd recommend just bringing some prayer potions instead. And you'll do something very similar to what I'm doing, except you're just going to have to protect from melee. After you've done it for an hour or so, you'll have enough points to be able to afford the absorption potion. Now for our inventory, you're going to want a locator orb or a dwarven rock cake. I'll explain why you need this in a minute. You're going to want roughly 5 super combat potions, and the rest will be absorption potions or prayer potions if it's your first time. Now once you have your training gear equipped, come over here to Nightmare Zone and talk to Dominic Onion. Now what you want to go down to is Rumble, and then we're going to do Customizable Normal Rumble. So that will cost you 22000 to start, but it's definitely worth the investment. So you want to come over here to drink the potion, and now you're going to be greeted with quite a few different selections. Now to be able to fight bosses in the Nightmare Zone, you do need to have completed quests. Which means we'll need to have at least completed 5 quests that are recommended. So right now we have Count Draenor, the Sand Snake, King Rauld, the Kendall, and me which all have a required quest. Other strong options are the Tree Spirit, the Khazard Warlord, and the Trapped Soul. So once you have your bosses selected, hit accept and get ready to start. So what we're going to do is run into the middle of the arena, we're going to chug our absorption potions. So just keep clicking them until you have a 1000 absorption counter in the corner. Afterwards we're going to feel our locator orb or dwarven rock cake until we're down to 1 HP. After that we're going to drink a super combat potion and we are ready to go. Make sure you have auto retaliate on and you should be set. Now the way this works is when we're at one hit point, we can only ever take one point of damage. Now as the absorption potions are absorbing all of the damage anyway, for every hit we take we're only losing one point on our absorption potion versus potentially 30 or 40 if we are full health. Uh, so this makes your absorption potions last a lot longer and will increase your time in here and your experience per hour by quite a lot. Now you can potentially AFK here as long as 20 minutes at a time, but I'd recommend checking back in at least every 5 minutes to locate or back down to 1 HP and drink another dose of super combat. Now at higher levels the XP per hour caps out at around 90k per hour, but will be dirt cheap and one of the most AFK ways to train to 99 combat. So how long exactly does it take to max out your melee combat stats with Nightmare Zone? Well in total it's going to take you roughly 500 
hours, which sounds like a lot. However, keep in mind that is three separate 99s, attack, strength, and defense. Each one will take you around 160 to 170 hours. Now I touched on this a bit at the beginning, but the order in which you train up your skills, attack, strength, defense does matter and gets a lot more important once you're going to be grinding for 500 hours. Now generally the order once again is going to be priority on strength and then attack and last defense. Most players will level their attack and strength equally up to around level 80 or 85 and then they'll go straight to 99 strength. So that is it for probably the most popular AFK and easy way to max out your melee combat stats. Now that said, there are quite a few other ways to train combat. Now beyond AFK training, the two other viable ways to level up your melee combats are either through Slayer or bossing. Now until this point, we haven't really been training on any strong monsters. Everything we've been killing has had absolutely zero defensive stats. So the combat style we're using to attack hasn't really mattered that much. However, there's one more really integral mechanic that you want to know, especially when you are fighting stronger monsters. Now, every melee weapon will have a certain set of attack bonuses, a stab bonus, a slash bonus, and a crush bonus. Now, most weapons will specialize in one of those or sometimes two or three. Now, this is very important because every monster also has a stab, slash, and crush defense. Now, these are paired together. For example, if you're using a dragon scimitar, you're most likely going to want to have it on slash. Uh, so just for an example, let's say you're fighting a gargoyle. So if you're using the Dragon Scimitar on Slash, as you should, the monster that you are fighting is going to be putting forth their Slash defense, which in the case of the gargoyle is 20. Now generally when you kill a monster, you want to use a weapon that they are weak against. For example, the gargoyle has a crush defense of 0, generally you would want to use a weapon that has a good crush attack. Now that doesn't necessarily mean you should put your weapon in crush mode just because it has the option to. Because your weapon may not have a very strong crush bonus. For example, you would never want to use your Dragon Scimitar realistically on stab because it'll be way weaker. Now the attack bonuses mechanic determines your accuracy, which means you could technically still hit very high, but you'll be much less accurate with an inefficient weapon. Now if you want to go down the Slayer route and kill Slayer monsters for decent combat training and experience, you probably want to wait at least to level 75 combat. If not further, some people recommend waiting until 85 combat, and some players recommend waiting even further. Now that's because early Slayer monsters and early Slayer masters really are not very good, and your experience rates are going to suffer tremendously. But if you want to go do it, just go ahead and do it, it's still pretty fun. However, once you have access to the Neve Slayer Master, things start to speed up. Training Slayer is a very efficient way to level up really four skills at once, and it's something you're most likely going to have to do eventually if you want to max out your account. Now one thing we haven't really touched on yet is the Piety Prayer. Now this is unlocked at level 70 prayer and defense and is a very powerful tool for melee combat training. However, when you're focusing, using Piety is highly recommended. It will increase your costs a bit, but it's going to speed things up tremendously and generally is worth using almost all the time. Now while training Slayer and using Piety, you can get usually pretty comparable rates if not more to AFK Nightmare Zone, while also making a decent amount of money to be able to afford better gear. Now for Slayer training at this point, there are of course a ton of gear upgrades you could consider getting. Now once you really start getting into the higher levels for melee combat, there are a ton of different gear options out there, and not many of them are cheap. Now with that said, from where we left off last time, there are still a few cost effective upgrades. Now once you get into the 80s or 90s for combat, I would highly recommend trying to pick up at the very least an Amulet of Torture. That currently is running only around 9 mil right now. Another really cost effective upgrade are Ferocious Gloves, only around 4 mil right now. That said, you do need to complete Dragon Slayer 2. And finally here, a Need Is Not Face Guard is a moderately expensive upgrade, but provides a lot of value for being 16 mil. Now then of course we have weapons, and unfortunately at this point there are no cost effective upgrades left. And what weapon you end up buying is really going to come down to what content you want to complete. If you're just trying to get 99 combats, I wouldn't really even recommend buying these. They're extremely expensive and they're going to provide a very marginal upgrade if you're purely in it for melee combat training. However, if you're doing bossing or slayer and generally fighting monsters that do have some defenses, these can be worthwhile upgrades, but they are of course very expensive. Now if you really want to make significant money, starting at around level 85 combats, you can start doing high-end bossing. Now bossing with melee is great, there are quite a few bosses you can kill, and generally you're going to be getting very good experience per hour, while also making a ton of money as well. 
The drawback course is there is a learning curve, you need to pay a lot more attention, but overall it's highly recommended if you feel like doing it. Incredibly strong bosses to kill with melee would be Cerberus, where you can get over 100k per hour in melee combats while making like 2 or 2.5 mil per hour. Vorkath is probably one of the best. Again, getting up to around 100k per hour melee combats and making upwards of 3 mil per hour if you know what you're doing. The Alchemical Hydra is also very good once you learn the melee method. Getting over 100k per hour while also making over 3 mil per hour. And a lower level option is the Giant Mole, which will give you quite a bit less XP per hour at maybe only 50 or 60k, but you'll still make good money at around 1 mil per hour. Now all of these bosses will require much better gear to kill efficiently, but normally there are more cost effective options to get started with the bosses and you'll start making money and eventually you can afford the better gear. Now bossing all the way from 85 to 99 melee combats can be very powerful and earn you a ton of money to get, well most of your high end gear. Uh, for example, if you did a combination of Cerberus, Vorkath, and Hydra on your way to 99 combat, it would take you roughly 300 hours of bossing to hit it, but along the way you'd probably earn somewhere between 500 and 700 mil, just a ton of money. Anyway guys, that is pretty much going to be it for my melee training guide. The structure of this guide has been a little bit different, and that is mainly because melee is a lot more fluid than a lot of other skills. There is just such a variety of different monsters that you could kill. Uh, but hopefully you still learned a lot. Anyway guys, thanks for watching. Let me know down below what skill guide you'd like to see next. And yeah, thanks for making it through the entire video. And I'll see you next time. Now before I go here, I want to give a giant thank you to all of my members over on YouTube. A huge thanks to Guy Fox, Wolf of the Hunt, Timothy Chen, Ocelot, and Kush Patel for all being subscribed to the Dragon Tier. All of you guys are awesome. Thank you for your continued support. Also a huge thank you to CJ Ruse, Mexos, Lord Dojin, YoYoSub89, BirdBot, and BaseTitch. Thanks again, guys. As always, if you guys are looking for another way to support the channel, becoming a YouTube member is an awesome way to do so. Get immortalized in all of my future videos. You can get access to my video release schedule, as well as a custom role in my Discord server. Thanks again, guys, and I'll see you next time.